Aloha, this is Jim Channon from the Bioport in Hawaii. Um, this is a little message for those of you out there in the world who wonder what our leaders are thinking about the future and wonder if there are some simple ways to take what we have now and solve that myriad list of problems that are beginning to face us. Problems of oil, problems of uh, natural disasters, climate change, you name it. You know what the list looks like. Now, imagine just some of these ups. I'm going to give you 20 quick shifts that take a, uh, an organization involved in the world today doing something and giving it a slightly different mission, shifting its focus six degrees or so, in order to solve a problem that needs to be solved. Think about these things. What if all armies, and by the way, they talk to each other much more than you would imagine, would focus on the surface of the land, bring back the forests, bring back the watersheds, and um, also help take school kids and others who can do that work into the forest lands in their vehicles, providing them with food, medical care, all the things army ha armies have besides bullets and guns. What if all the banks would invest in vision, vision to main and maintain an ethical marketplace, make sure that the marketplace is not overrun by large interests in the favor uh, or at the expense of small interests? What if the corporations, instead of living in big corporate headquarters, move from that to sort of a campus and from the campus into a, a global village setting. So all those people who in the industrial age went to work at a certain time of day, did their work, ate their lunch and came home at the end of the day, would actually be in an environment that was like a village. So that social life there would be at the quality we would expect after a hundred years of industrial effort. What if the chemical companies would actually provide medicine to the people on the planet who can't get it? I think they make enough profit. What if the oil companies, who by the way are really liquid transportation companies, did you ever think of that? What they do is they go about the business of moving liquid from one place, refining it, moving it to another. If they focus on the South Pole, which has five-sixths of the world's fresh water, which now, by the way, costs more than oil in a small container, same amount per capita, um, would move fresh water, refine it, charge it using their refineries, and deliver, it, deliver that to the people on the planet who need it. Navies. Navies are at sea, in ships, have very technical gear, could control over fishing, and could increase fish growing. Marines, likewise, who operate along the shorelines of the planet, could bring back uh, those wetland zones and also coral to the degree that it can. They have the amphibious vehicles and the manpower and the control and coordination to do that. What if churches become um, in charge of all refugee programs like refugee villages on the planet today are, first of all, usually too late in getting set up, don't have medical that they need, don't have the sanitation that they quite need, certainly don't have the entertainment that they need for a whole group of people to be in a socially acceptable situation until such time as they have the psychic power to get back in the game. Um, that's a good job for churches. What if medical institutions would merge with travel and adventure and offer tourist oppor opportunities that are heavily laced with preventive medicine, health building concepts, not repair. Combine the time and the money you have every year to take a two week vacation to go somewhere where you actually build your health, not come home worn out, um, tired from driving around uh, looking at gas stations very often and having a vacation where you eat too much and drink too much to a very preventive and healthfully oriented situation. Governments will um, 
decentralize. There's nothing magic about trying to stuff everything in government in one city, someplace in one nation. There's everything important about moving that control center and service center to bioregional locations where the specific bioregions get what they need. Cookie cuttering a nation like America, for example, which is partly desert and partly forest and partly cold and partly wet, and try to make everybody do the same thing is a bit silly. Space agencies will build portals to and from other worlds in space. While we've been distracted by a war in uh, the Middle East for seven years, by the way, people who have been looking up into space have found a billion new uh, planetary solar systems, basically. In other words, planets going around stars. They've also found great voids in the space. They, they've found what looks like the edge of the universe. We need to get more involved because the next century is going to be very much more about us joining the galaxy than paying attention only to ourselves. The air forces of the world have beautiful capacity to deliver refugee villages and um, the kinds of villages necessarily during any kind of an emergency, a uh, planetary emergency, like the tsunamis in the Indian Ocean. They also have the capacity to monitor the land and the quality of the air, particularly all over the Earth, and produce weather reports that can tell us what's going on in our air. I think four out of seven deaths now are ascribed to pollution. And uh, then broadcast that information so that local communities can clean up all the, well, all of those people who <laughs> make the mess. Um, Large construction firms need to dig canals from ocean uh, areas down into the places that are lower than oceans and move the rising ocean water into places where fish can be grown again. And by the way, let's take all the Micronesians that have been flooded out because of the rising oceans and move them there to help grow the fish. You know, there's never been a time when water wasn't a valuable asset. So rising oceans is no reason to hold our breath. We should start moving it where we want it to move. And by the way, the, the Halliburtons of the world are perfectly designed to do that. Um, colleges. See, it's going to sound strange. Somebody needs to be the protector and owner of seed banks. Seeds are going to be vital to our life in the future. They need to be thoughtfully uh, culled, uh, you know, sorted and protected. And colleges is a great place to do that. Um, in this case, grade schools will recycle and trade the broadest range of small goods. Let's get our kids into the recycling game, re, uh, the whole business of using older things. Everybody doesn't have to have a brand new this. Get it? That's the idea. Let's get the kids in the exchange department. Peoples um, of the world should seek, in a common educational approach, the development of evolutionary consciousness, meaning how to take care of yourself and how to grow, by the way, and um, develop a visionary mindset so that we don't get stuck in the old forms of the past. Uh, Mohammed Mahathir of Malaysia employed people recently to design a way for every person in Malaysia to have a visionary mindset. Totally breakthrough stuff. Isn't it time to sort of see our world for the full potential that it could offer us? Well, let's just put it this way. Why imagine paradise is coming later?